Welcome back to our learning course. In the course, we will frequently talk about learning experiments, and we need some way of describing them. The basic architecture of learning experiments is that the animals perceive stimuli and perform responses. So we want to describe essentially which stimuli are used and how stimuli and responses are related. The stimuli usually come on and off according to certain rules. For example, a Pavlovian conditioning experiment might involve having a light be off for a certain uh, time, like 30 seconds, then on again for 10 seconds, and then drinking water could be allowed for 5 seconds. Another fact about the psychology experiments is that often an experiment is broken down of elementary chunks of experiences, so to speak, that are repeated many times in an identical or almost identical way. These chunks are called trials by psychologists. For example, in the experiment just discussed, every time that we turn on the light and then allow drinking would be a trial. There are usually many trials in an experiment because animals take some time to learn. For example, a pigeon would need to see many times the light come on before being allowed to drink in order to understand that the light is a reliable signal for the opportunity to drink. Let's see what our notation looks like for this and similar learning experiments. Pavlovian conditioning experiments are usually described with rather simple notation for two reasons. First, usually only one behavior is measured, like salivation in dogs or eye blinking in rabbits. Second, the animal's behavior does not change which stimuli are presented. For example, Pavlov would give meat after sounding a bell, regardless of what the dog did when hearing the bell. He could salivate or not, get excited or not, and the meat would always follow the bell. This means that we only need to write down which stimuli enter the experiment and how they are reinforced. We typically use small tables with capital letters for stimuli and plus and minus for the presence or absence of reinforcement. The first table here shows that Pavlov's basic experiment can be simply written as A+, plus, meaning that a certain stimulus, which now we are calling A, was followed by some reinforcer. The second table shows an experiment in which A plus training is followed by A B plus training, where B is some other stimulus. The fact that A plus and A B plus are listed in different phases, phase one and phase two, means that they are not intermixed. We first train on A plus, and then when this training is completed, we train on A B plus. We often use abstract labels like A and B and plus and minus to emphasize the structure of the experiment rather than the fact that, for example, A is a red light and B is a green one, plus is food versus something else. However, all these letters get boring after a while, so for the most part we will use simple symbols like a light bulb for a visual stimulus, a bell for a sound stimulus, and a pizza slice for food. So, for example, in the first table, uh, we write A plus and then AB plus, and this can be written better or in a more readable way by having a, a light bulb sign followed by pizza, and um, then light bulb and bell followed by pizza. Now, we don't mean a literal pizza slice, but something that is food to the animal. That is what we, we mean by having a pizza slice there. These the table shows the most common symbols that we will use. This is less boring than writing A, B, C, plus and minus, but there are still abstractions. Uh, the light could mean any visual stimulus, even if it's not a literal light bulb. And of course, laboratory animals, as I was saying, are seldom given pizza, but that works well as a symbol for a food stimulus that we can uh, recognize easily. We will also use a thumbs up and thumbs down to mean generic positive and negative stimuli. The bottom part of the table shows some more notation. We will write no X when stimulus S is off or absent, like a light bulb that is turned off. The arrow will mean followed by, like when a stimulus is followed by food. And the question mark means that the experiment shows X to the animal in order to test how the animal reacts to it, rather than to train a response to X. Now we can turn to a slightly more complex notation that we will mostly use for instrumental conditioning experiments. 
Here, what stimuli are presented to the animal depends on the animal's behavior, on what the animal does. For example, the animal may experience a reward only if it does something specific, like pressing a button or a lever. It is also common to measure more than one behavior in this case. For example, when we train a sequence of two different actions, like first press the button and then a lever. All this means that we must write down the animal's actions in addition to which stimuli the animal perceives. For example, here we have a visual stimulus followed by press, then uh, the animal receives food. The visual stimulus followed by other behavior, then the animal receives no food, and if there is no uh, visual stimulus, any behavior leads to no food. This is a simple description of uh, some training that we might want to do. Another feature of experiments is that many uh, experiments compare groups of animals that receive different experiences. In this case, each group gets a line in the table. For example, here we have a group that receives in phase one a light bulb followed by pizza, and in phase two light bulb uh, and bell followed by pizza, and then there is a second group, group two, that has an identical phase two experience but lacks the phase one experiences. This table also shows another notation that we will use that is indicating in the test column what we are interested about. In this case, for example, the main purpose of the experiment is to compare responding to the uh, bell stimulus, which could be any sound, between the two groups of animals. This experiment is called blocking, and uh, we will see it in, uh, in, a different, uh, in a different lessons. I'm just using it as an example of uh, our notation. This lesson is a prerequisite for understanding how experiments are described in later lessons. This what next list contains a few examples of lessons where the notation is used, but there are many more lessons in the course using the notation explained here. This lesson is over. Happy learning to everyone.